This one's wife. She's not trying to steal attention. I've explained to you on many occasions that the narcissist pursues, usually subconsciously because most narcissists are unaware, the prime aims. Control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits. It's massively important where you want to understand why the narcissist behaves as they do that you grasp this concept of that's what's powering the narcissist. On the surface, it might look like that they want to have a beautiful home because it's nice to live in a beautiful house. But the reason that a narcissist wants a beautiful home is so that they can then triangulate that with people in order to control them by way of their reactions. What a gorgeous house you have, and that they provide them with positive fuel. That even perhaps people look on them with envy, which delights the narcissist, because it's a reaction, and reactions are what counts, because reactions are fuel, the lifeblood of the narcissist. I regularly explain to my clients that what you see as the behaviour and activity of the narcissist, you need to almost strip back and look underneath the bonnet to realise that what's actually occurring is that it is all about the prime aims. Therefore, where the narcissist insults you and calls you names, that's being done to control you by way of provocation and draw fuel from you. Where the narcissist is buttering you up and flattering you, you might think that's because the narcissist is really into you. No, it's being done in a benign fashion to control you, to draw fuel from you by way of your thanks and gratitude and appreciation, possibly to access a residual benefit so that the narcissist gains money from you. When it comes to an interaction between the narcissist and anybody else, it is always, repeat, always governed by the prime aims. Nothing else. Not love. Not liking, not hatred. Those are just the bridges, the roads, the freeways to compel the narcissist to get to the prime aims. That's what it's all about. The most important aspect of the prime aims is the necessity of control. Narcissists are hypersensitive to the issue of control. They're calibrated in a way that failing to acknowledge them threatens their sense of existence and compels them to take action to draw that attention back onto them by gaining your attention, whether politely or rudely. But the point is your attention must be got because then that signals that you're under control. For this one's wife, she faces repeated threats to her control on a daily basis. Now, it's important to point out that it isn't the case that for most narcissists, each and every moment they find themselves facing a threat to control. There are long periods of instances where all is running quite swimmingly for the narcissist. They're watching television and their spouse is chatting away to them. The spouse is showing that they're under control by talking to them. There's no threat to control. There are no issues. There are no problems. And therefore, that particular narcissist does not find themselves experiencing repeated problems with regard to the issue of control. Of course, that can alter in an instant as a failure of asking a question or responding, failure perhaps of going to get the narcissist a cup of tea. But for this one's wife, because of the prominence that she has, because of the, the international scale on which she's known, and the fact that so many people are sceptical of her and don't like her, means that she faces threats to her control on a daily basis. Furthermore, unlike other narcissists which just get on with their own projects and lives and basically laugh at and dismiss the tittle-tattle of individuals, she cannot help, because of the type of narcissist that she is, to delve into the world of social media and mainstream media to find out what is being stated about her. Thus, repeatedly, she has to issue PR puff pieces because she can't help herself but need to nullify the threat to control that is posed by what people are stating about her. And for example, it's done here through another supine publication, L, with an article by Alyssa Bailey which tells us, this one's wife and Prince Harry aren't purposely scheduling events the same day as the royals. I know that in popular parlance this is ref re referred to as a clap back. Where in actual fact, it's, from the narcissistic perspective, the necessity of nullifying the threat to control posed by criticism. The criticism is this. 
you this one's wife, regularly look to upstage, overshadow, steal the thunder in relation to other people's events. This criticism therefore threatens her sense of control. Her narcissism needs to nullify it. Therefore, it causes her to issue, through a PR puff piece, a denial that that is the case, utilising the improbably named plastic-faced Lickspittle. Weasel, that is, the Lieutenant Omid Scobie. At the end of November, this one's wife and Prince Harry stepped out for a rare public outing, travelling to Vancouver, see parts pass him, to celebrate the next Invictus Games, which will be hosted there. Within 24 hours, the royal family hosted the President of the Republic of Korea during a state visit to the UK, where Kate Middleton even wore a tiara. The question remains, was each party aware of the other's event? Royal reporter and Bell Endgame author Omid Scobie told L.com in a recent interview that no, actually the teams are not coordinating the schedules anymore. A lot of people will say, Harry and this one's wife, they're out to steal their spotlight, and how dare this one's wife go to this? She knew Kate was going out today, etc. The reality is there's just no communication between the royal household and their office, so of course they're not going to know when anyone steps out, he said. They are literally in the dark about what goes on within the royal family. I don't even know if they're trusted enough to even be privy to that kind of information. Well, they're certainly not. Scobie added that even the two royal households, helmed by William and Charles, respectively aren't working together the way they used to. You actually really only need to look closer to home to see that even between Charles and Williams' offices, they seem to be operating in complete silos, because the engagements, the big tickets, the big important projects, they're all happening at the same time and on top of one another, he explained. I find that in itself very revealing about the current state of affairs between the working royals or the current working royal lineup, because many years ago, every office was pretty much in sync. You would never have anyone stepping out on the same day or doing something at the exact same time as the Queen going out on an engagement. Everyone had their space. As for Harry and this one's wife being more aware of the royal family's event schedule some day, I don't think a world in which that could ever happen would be the case, Scobie admitted. This article serves two purposes. It smears the royal family by suggesting that they're not essentially coordinating with one another in the way that it used to be when Queen Elizabeth was alive, and also issues the protestation from this one's wife, no, 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 I'm not trying to steal anybody's attention. The problem with this is twofold. One, she's a narcissist and therefore we all know she craves attention because it's fuel to her. Two, her behaviour demonstrates that that's the case. Therefore, despite the denials and protestations of Omid Scobie, they're not actually going to take her anywhere in terms of convincing anybody that she isn't attempting to steal the limelight. Furthermore, his explanation that there is no coordination between this one's wife and the royal family, whilst that's correct, she doesn't need that in order to attempt to steal their thunder. How so? Well, all she needs to do is look in the media, which she regularly does to see what Kate and William and Charles etc. have been doing, because it's reported on. And we all know that because of her narcissism's need for control, she needs to know what they're all up to, and therefore she looks, and she finds out. And we regularly see, whenever there has been something involving the British royal family, who is it that suddenly pops up, being seen walking across a parking lot, and funnily enough being photographed and filmed? This one's wife. Oh, who all of a sudden decides to go to the ice hockey? This one's wife, to ensure that she's seen on the Jumbotron. Accordingly, no matter what the protestations of her loyal lapdog, Omid Scobie, to suggest that she doesn't seek to steal the attention, we know, one, she does because she's a narcissist, Two, we know she does because we've seen it happen repeatedly. And three, we know she doesn't need to have a coordination with the royal family to achieve that. She simply needs to look at what they're up to in the media and then respond accordingly. Once again, another attempt to nullify a threat to control. And once again, another failure from the abject loser. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>